In this video I'm building this really cool RV sign that's automated with LEDs. And like in all the projects that I do of this type, I've got a documentation packet. Download it from a website. Well the first thing I need for this project is obviously a sign. And I had this sign made, uh, this custom made sign, about $40. And it is a little bit on a small side, but in this project, actually, it's probably not a bad size. And it's about a 12 inch by 5 and a half inch uh, sign. And it's made out of cedar, so it has a pretty good uh, characteristics for being outside. And then when I'm done, I'm just going to varnish this with a couple coats just to kind of protect it. Now the one problem with the sign is if you try to run an LED strip light around then it's not going to illuminate the sign itself so this is not going to light up at night. So what I need to do is I'm going to convert this into a shadow box by putting a border piece of wood around. And so that's the first step in this project. And I have a little piece of cedar here that's about 3 inch thick and I'm going to cut this so that I can make a box around here. And I think I'll make a box joint out of this. But you can use any kind of a joint that your skill level will allow. And I'm going to make, as I said, these box joints, which look like these. And this is my uh, INCRA template system that I have on my router table. And it really allows you to make uh, box joints without too much trouble. And I'm going to make what's called box D, which is this one here. And this is actually the template for box D. And this template will slide into the positioner. And so the way this synchro positioner works is this is the scale that I'm using. And every blue line is one side of the piece. And every red line is the other side. So you may see here that I have this over the red line. So I make the cut. Then the next cut, I move this handle back. And then I slide it over to the next red line and then lock it in place and then make the next cut by sliding this table through the router bit and when you're done you'll have evenly spaced cuts uh, that you need for the box joint. And you know one nice thing about these box joints is I don't even have these things in all the way and it's already pretty dang strong and it kind of self aligns. And here's the box after it's dried and uh, I just uh, trimmed down the corners. And then the next step is going to be to cut this down so that I can fit it inside the perimeter, inside perimeter of the box. And this is the result after I did that. But as luck would have it, I ended up chipping a piece here. And this was a knot. So I'm going to use an old woodworker's trick and mix some glue with some sawdust and try to fill up. Well I do have the knot hole patched here so the next step is I need to drill a pilot hole in the upper corner here and this is what will feed the wires for the LED from the back side to the front side. And now I have my sliding table attached to the back side of the sign and I'm going to mill a slot where the hole is from the front down about halfway and then in and then uh, when we get ready to put the wire in I'm going to put the wire in here and then epoxy it in. Now you don't have to be this elaborate you know you can use a piece of duct tape or you can just glue it to the surface or whatever. While we have the signs drying from the application of the varnish I want to go over the automation options. My intent with this is to make this battery operated. So when it's battery operated there are a couple of things that you have to be mindful of. Number one is the battery voltage and number two is how much current these things take while they're on operation. And for that reason I really don't recommend using 50-50s. Now, of course, you can always AC power it and use a standard LED strip, you know, with the 
AC power connector and all that kind of stuff. And that's fine if you want it to be AC powered, but I don't. I want to make this DC powered. So the first option I have here, this is actually a 5050 RGB strip. But what's unique about this is this is a 5 volt strip, not a 12 volt strip. And this is the type that you would normally find around the TV, backlighting the TV, and it has a USB connector and you basically plug it into the TV. This is a 3528 strip RGB and it runs on three AA batteries. And you turn it on and this one is a 6 volt LED strip. And so you have the controller here. You can change colors. You can change speeds, you can change brightness, you can change the mode, the flashing, and what have you. This is a viable option, but this really is not waterproof. So you'd have to get a box, something like this, and this is a waterproof box with a gasket. The next option is this EL strip or electroluminance, and this strip uses two AA batteries. And the issue here is it generates a high frequency and it can interfere with some equipment. And I think you can hear the camera picking that up. And again, the same issues you have. Uh, this isn't exactly waterproof. The LED strip you choose is going to make a big difference on how long you can run off a battery. And the details are on one of the pages in the document package. And I've actually tested a few of them. And this first one is a SMD 3528 RGB at 12 volts. And here's another SMD3528 RGB at 12 volts. And finally, we have an SMD5050 at 5 volts. And to test these, I have a power supply that has a ammeter and voltmeter. And I adjusted the voltage to 9.6 volts, which is what the nominal voltage of the battery is going to be. And then I looked at the ammeter while I turned each lead on separately and then all three together. So I actually cut these to a one meter length and that's about what it's going to take for the sign. This first one which is a super night, the red only was 93 milliampers, the green only was 63 milliampers, and the blue only was 61 milliampers. So the red takes most current between the red, green, and blue and in all cases the green took the least and blue took somewhere in between. Now, if you run all three lights together, all the red, blue, green, you're going to consume 243 milliampers per hour. And what that actually means is that you're going to have about eight hours worth of LED action on this 9.6 volt battery. So what that means is if you run it continuously for eight hours in one night, you're going to completely discharge the battery. We also looked at a, another one called BSOD, that was the brand, or another brand that had the same characteristics was First ST Light, and these were on Amazon. Again, on my packet and in my website, I'll put links to where I bought these. And this took about half the current. The uh, red was 66 uh, milliampers per meter, the green was 27 milliampers per meter, and the blue was 30 milliampers per meter with a total of 123 milliampers per meter with all three of them on. So this takes half the energy that the Super Night one did. So by all means, you're going to want to use this one instead of the Super Night. Just to see, this is a 5 volt version, and because you might be tempted to run a 4 cell battery at 4.8 volts rather than an 8 cell at 9.6. And this will run on the 4.8 volts, and as well, the automation board will run on 4.8 volts. This is easy to run on 9.6 volts. However, this one, uh, 150 milliampers in red, 100 milliampers per meter in green, and 123 milliampers in blue for a total of 375 milliampers. And this actually is almost twice as much as this one. So you're going to get maybe four hours of operation out of this if you can find a 2000 milliampere battery at 4.8 volts. And it makes sense because when you reduce the voltage, you have to increase the current to get the same intensity. This is a RGB controller, and I actually designed, built, and made this myself. And I'm going to have a different video on just making this because it's just going to run this video too long otherwise. The way this controller works is this is actually a microcontroller. It's called an ATtiny85. And we have a photo cell here, 
and a sensitivity adjustment. So we can adjust this photo cell to come on and to come off at certain times of the day. So basically we can detect dusk to dawn. And then we can run this strip all night long. We can run it two hours. We can run it four hours. The beauty of this is you're going to program into this little microcontroller what you want it to do. You're going to program in what kind of sequence you want. We're going to program whether it will use this photo cell. And there's also two switches here. That gives us four combinations. And again, what those sequences are, whatever you want to program into here. And we can further extend this by taking one of these switches and put it into a push button. So it will be like this style where every time you push the button you're going to make something different happen. You can do that with this as well if you'd like. And I'm also using a 9.6 volt 2000 milliamp hour battery. This one's made by Tenergy. And this is a common battery pack and they're about $10. And they're found in RC cars. I found that the 12 volt LED strip will run just fine on this 9.6 volt battery with about 80% of the brightness that 12 volts will give you. This is a photo cell. You get night time and then I have one sequence burn into this and we can flip the switch down and a different sequence and then flip the switch here. Another sequence yet. Then finally if I flip them both up I have a fourth sequence which just is on solid. I also have a timer built into this so this will run if it's on solid like this that's going to take a little more current so this is going to run two hours. In any of the other flashing sequences it will run four hours or you can actually go in and reprogram this to run different. One thing this could do is it could annoy your neighbors at night so I would encourage you both for keeping the battery drained down and so that your neighbors aren't really mad at you, your RV neighbors at the campground. Keep a timer in here and turn this off. So in other words, this will come on around dusk, flash for four hours, and then shut off for the rest of the night. You can change the sequencing. You can have a flash one pattern for an hour, or flash another pattern for an hour. Uh, and you can also use this as a monochrome controller. So instead of having RGB uh, LEDs, you can use, say, just a green one or a white one or whatever. And then you can actually expand this switch to 16 different combinations. And again, it's going to be too hard for me to go over all how all this works in this project video, and I'm going to do a video just for this. So I would also encourage you to go to the website and look at all the details of how all this stuff works. And I had to reconnect the end to this LED strip that we've chosen simply because the other strip didn't have a long enough pigtail and this is about 18 inches of wire. Of course you can watch the video on how I did that and I used about three or four coats of white liquid tape to help seal it. So now we're just going to put this piece of heat shrink on. Now we're going to install the LED strip into the sign and as you can see this is nice and shiny. I've put several coats of varnish on this. And we'll just use a little dab of silicone or something to seal this when we're done. And you can see the LED will fit in that little ridge. And this particular LED strip actually is quite thin. So it actually goes around the corners fairly easily. You see we have a little gap here and we don't want spiders to get in there or anything. And again, I like to use silicone and it's just this household silicone stuff and we're just gonna fill that little gap in and unfortunately we had to cut the end off here so we have a small gap because with this particular set of LEDs you know this is quite this is quite a long strip between cutoff points you're gonna see maybe a little gap in there but it's not bad and realize that this is just a prototype, so, you know, I can forgive myself for not getting an LED there. In reality, you don't really miss not seeing that one in the corner, actually. It, so it doesn't look really all that bad. This is the case, and I want to drill a hole in the bottom of the case and mount the case onto the back side like that. 
Well, now we're in our final assembly, and I put the box on the back, screwed the circuit board into the box, and I did find that the photo cell wasn't long enough, so I actually clipped it off and put a couple little extra pieces of wire on there so I could mount the photo cell to the outside. Now, this is epoxy filled, this photo cell, so it's probably going to be waterproof enough, I'm thinking. I also put in a on off switch push button switch and this is a waterproof boot that goes to the battery charger so I can plug the charger in and then this is just the charger that came it's a Tenergy charger that came with a Tenergy battery and the connectors uh, that the battery and everything comes with they're called Tamiya connectors and they're the RC car type connectors but I just use these since they're already on here, I just bought some more, put one on here so we can connect the battery to uh, the box. This is G10 fiberglass reinforced plastic, very common. And again, on my website, I have a source for this. I'm using this fiberglass just as kind of a little tray for the battery. And then I just have a couple cable ties. It should be a rare occasion to have to take this battery out, probably. The only time you have to take it out is if it goes bad, you got to replace it. And then all you have to do is just put some more cable ties in it. And then just a matter of connecting. And then when we turn the power on, you should see three flashes, which is kind of like the splash screen. If I put my finger over the photo cell, and I also just put a little bungee cord here with a couple screw eyes so I can just hang it. And the carver has a little gasket on it. And so there we go, the sign is fitting perfectly on the pin box with a couple of little bungee cords.